Hey there, I'm Angelo Montilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create interactive pop-out windows using Adobe InDesign. Follow along in this lesson and learn how to add animation to pop-out windows and set up buttons to trigger open and close interactions. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. On my screen, I have a digital catalog for a fictional camping slash outdoors company. I'm gonna open my layers panel. Let me show you this. I have card one. This is the entire window here. If I turn it off, that whole group is turned off. There's card two and there's card three. If I collapse each card, each contains the close button. You could see there. And then the coat set, which is the rest of the content. And then all the other content is on main content layer. What we're going to do now is open the animation panel, which I have open here. I'm just going to tear it off and place it to the side. We'll also need buttons and forms, and those are good for now. I will also be toggling back and forth from the layers panel. Of course, if you need animation and if you need buttons and forms, you know where to find them. You go up to window, interactive, and all your interactive tools and panels are located there. Let's start by adding the animation to the code sets and the close buttons. So I'm going to start by clicking the code set one and let's go to the animation tab. You can see it's named code set one and the preset here will be zoom in 2D. Right now it does say on page load. We will change that as we move on. The duration, I want this to happen pretty quickly. So 0.125 and that's it. We've set the animation for the first window here, the grouped content. Let's do the same for the first close button. So click that. You can see it's called close button one. The preset here will be fade in. And again, it does say on page load, but we will change that when we set up the buttons to trigger both animations. The duration set it the same as the first window. So 0.125 and then just hit return on your keyboard and we can now move on to the next set. So go to your layers panel. Let's turn off card one. We're on card two now. Let's click the first coat set two group here, the grouped content. And again, the preset is zoom in 2D and the duration will be 0.125. Let's click on the close button. You can see that's close button two. The preset here is fade in and the duration is 0.125. Let's go ahead, turn that layer off. And now we're on card three. Click that window, coat set three. The preset again is zoom in 2D with a duration of point, point 0.125. And same with the close button, close button three. Preset is fade in and the duration is point 0.125. Now the animation for all three grouped items and the close buttons have been set up now. And next, we'll go ahead and add the button interactivity to trigger all three. Let's briefly turn off card one, card two, and card three. And let's focus in on these detail buttons in the catalog themselves. So in other words, the viewer can click the details button and then that will trigger the pop-out windows where they can get some more information about the product and then click on the order online button to take viewers to a website to actually purchase or view the content online. So I'm on the details button. I'm going to click that and let's go to buttons and forms and I'm going to click button. I want to turn that into a button and this is called details button one. And the action here is animation. So go ahead and choose animation and you can see there's an animation to play coat set one. That's great. But I also want to add a secondary animation to play close button one. So we want that when I click details, I want the animation for coat set one to open as well as animation for close button one. Great. We can actually set a rollover appearance to this. So click rollover, double click to drive into it. And in the swatches panel, I'm just going to give it this lighter blue color and then click on normal again. So when I roll over it, we get the lighter blue and then it goes back to the darker blue. Great. Let's move on to the second details button and click button to convert it to a button. And this is details button two. 
the action again is animation and we want this to play coat set two. Let's add a secondary animation action and let's have that play close button two. So as long as you see code set two, close button two, you're in good shape there. I'm gonna click roll over, double click, give it the lighter blue color, and then just click on normal to go back to the original appearance. Now I'm highlighting all the coats or jackets in this catalog, we're not gonna do the other ones, so I'm just gonna click this last one here for details, and select button for the type. And again, this is details button three, the action is animation, and we want code set three to play. We'll add a secondary animation and have the close button three play as well. Let's click roll over, double click to drive into that and give it the lighter blue. Go back to normal. Great, now the buttons to trigger the coat sets and the close buttons have been applied. Let's focus on the close buttons now. So if I go to my layers panel, let's turn on all the cards again. And I'm gonna click on card one and let's collapse it and then choose in the indicator here, choose close button one so we have that selected. And let's convert that to a button. And let's call this close button one just to match what the animation was called. And in the action here, let's choose animation and we do want to have it animate the coat set one, but instead of play, we want to set it to reverse. Let's click roll over, double click, and then choose that lighter blue again, and then choose normal. I also want to hide this until it's triggered, so go ahead and choose that. Now we did set one animation to this. There is one other thing we have to do, is set up a show hide buttons and forms action so go ahead and do that, show hide buttons and forms, and we want to hide close button one. So in other words, when I click this close button, the first one, I want it to reverse the animation, but I also want it to close this so it doesn't appear again, okay? You could reverse the animation, but this just looks a little bit more natural. When you click it, it just quickly disappears rather than animates or fades out. This looks a lot better. Okay, so let's move on to the second one. Go to your layers panel, collapse card two, and then choose close button two. Just click the indicator, perfect. And let's convert that to a button and this will be called close button two. And in the actions, we wanna set it to animation. Let's set the animation to coat set two, but instead of playing it, we wanna reverse it and let's set another action of show hide buttons and forms and hide close button two. Perfect, let's also give this a rollover effect. So double click and swatches to the lighter blue. Oops, wanna make sure that I wasn't on the right one there. So let me go to layers and actually turn these ones off. It's always the best thing to do. So double click to drive into that rollover, then give it the blue color. And now I can go back up to normal. Good, let's minimize that. So this one's set as well. Now we can go to our third card. I'm just gonna turn this one off and turn card three on. Let's collapse card three. Actually, you could just click that icon there. And this again will be a button and this will be called close button three with an action of animation. To animate coat set three, but instead of play, we want to reverse and let's add another action of show hide buttons and forms and hide close button three. Click rollover, double click to drive into that rollover appearance and in the swatches panel just give it that lighter blue and then click normal. Let's also make sure that the hidden until triggered option is selected so we don't see that close button until it's triggered. Also, now that I'm remembering, let's go to the layers panel. I'm gonna turn card two on for a second. Let's collapse that and choose close button two. And also make sure that that is hidden until triggered. Good, I think we're all set up here. So I'm gonna bring those up and turn everything on. And now there's just one other thing we have to do. So remember I mentioned that the animations were occurring on page load. We have to turn that off for everything. 
So let's start with card one and let's collapse that. This is the easiest way to work. You can turn off the layers and then choose these indicators to, to select things. So close button one, go to the animation panel. And now that I'm in close button one, do you see in the events here, it says on page load and on release. Go ahead and uncheck on page load for all the items, okay? Uncheck that. Let's go to card two, choose close button two, and uncheck on page load, uncheck on page load. We have one more to do here. This just means that the animations will not occur until we have the buttons selected or clicked on. So uncheck that and then go ahead and uncheck on page load. Now that everything is turned on again, let's test it out and see how everything looks. So that's a good sign, nothing is showing up. I'm gonna hover over the first, second, and third detail buttons. I'm gonna click the first one and there's our first pop-up window and we can go ahead and close that. Open the second and close it. And there's the third and we can also close that. Now what if I wanted to add a link to this order online? Let's go ahead and close this for a sec and I'll add a link to the first the first button only. So because this is grouped, you'll have to drive into it a few times. So double click, double click until you get to that order online button. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can actually convert that to a button or you can actually even just add a hyperlink. So in the hyperlinks panel here, you can go ahead and tear that off and just group it with the others. And now that I have that selected, just click this plus icon. You can also go up here and create a new hyperlink that will create this dialog box where you can link to a URL and I'll just put in my website dot montilladesign.com slash tutorials. Okay. And just hit okay. And now that is hyperlinked and you know it is because this green icon is showing me and it's telling me that this is an active website. So now that that's all set up, let's go ahead and share this. I will publish it online and let's have a look at how it appears in a web browser. So to remember to publish online, let's click on the share button and then choose publish online. That brings up your publish your document online dialog box window here. You can update an existing document or publish a new one. Give it a title, give it a description. You can look after some of the other settings and then you would just hit publish. I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already published one and let me just open that up in my web browser here. I'm gonna open it up in full screen mode and let's test out those buttons. So I'm gonna hover over the first, the second, the third. Those all have those nice hover rollover appearances. Click the first, you can close it. Click the second, close it. And then you can click the third and also close it. If I click details button one and hover over the first button here, the order online, you can see that that is active. And if I click it, it opens up montilladesign.com with all my tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create interactive pop-out windows using Adobe InDesign. If you found it helpful, leave a like or comment below. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell icon to stay up to date with all my latest content. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design using Adobe InDesign, check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.